Hey guys, Nakama here, I'm back with another video on Lust for Truth. This time, I'm going to do a full walkthrough of uh, the game and just spoil the game a bunch, I guess. Uh, currently, the game has been only been released for only uh, for a few days I, uh, after I posted the link. So the game is not popular at all. If, if anything, I'm, I'm kind of I will be surprised at if currently someone actually finished the game. So to make uh, the player's jobs more easier, I decided to make this walkthrough. Now, I'm not going to spoil plot points and twists before it happens. The, just so you know, so it's... Uh, if you're like, don't skip ahead and only watch the certain parts where you're stuck at, then this video is structured in a way that that you can like watch that. You can, if you're stuck at a certain point, you can like slowly skip to the, to the part you're stuck to and you know, I'll tell you guys how to unstuck yourself. That is the intention of this video. But you know, if you're like uh, really smart and really hardworking and if you really, really want to know the truth, you probably don't uh, need this tutorial. In any case, I just, uh, want to do it and I also want to uh, commentate about certain things uh, that I write as well so it's sort of a walkthrough but it's also sort of my uh, offers co commentary on the game so even if you fin currently have uh, finished the game you can still watch this video and have some interesting insight and commentary about it now this part is you know obviously uh, there's no uh, way for you to get stuck. You just get information dumped to you. No, no, no. Like, I already covered this uh, part of the story in my other video. So, yeah, I'm going to skip ahead. And obviously, multi question choice is pretty obvious. I think I made a video talking about this section uh, exclusively. And this part is also the first part where it's. It's a bit confusing, but the truth, uh, a funny fact, uh, Marian is actually the first uh, character to use the truth files before any of the detective. So that's very funny. Uh, it, uh, the answer you have to give out is uh, private rooms info. This is because uh, uh, Fushijin was suggesting that uh, Hori escaped her own own room through the window and uh, Marion immediately re remembers this information and tries to uh, counter-argue that. Now, of course, the detectives themselves are supposed to be the ones having access to the full truth files. It's just that the, the truth, like in story, the characters are not actually looking at a, at a file and choosing a truth file. It's just that the players are are supposed to choose one action to progress the story but the, ca the canon story is basically just the, the, the true path where the characters are not using some sort of a true file the, the detectives are using a certain uh, system to store the files files and important information and communicate with one another but that's besides the point yeah the the reason uh, this works is because you know Marion is saying the window is too small to fit through and also it was not damaged. So Hori could not have like smashed her own window and exit or exit through the window. So we're going to skip here. And this is also a very easy answer. Like if you, you can always just brute force this. But then again, it's pretty easy. You just, uh, of course, this is basically to establish that uh, Salim and Yumiko are also suspects aside from Tema. Uh, Tema, who was a Reiner, and uh, Marianne. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get any uh, gameplay questions during these sections. Oh, okay, you skipped way ahead. And uh, Gultimus' uh, question was that. Uh, there is a, a struggle between the culprit and the victim after all. Like, and Fushijin himself was previously uh, talking about... Uh, he directly took uh, Marion's alibi, so he probably has a good me memory of 
what Marianne said, which is why uh, positions also do want to make an argument against the uh, struggle against the culprit. The evidence that you're supposed to present is Temas closed at 80 p.m. According to Maria, Temas had broken clothes and his collar was ripped during the t dinner. Yeah, only uh, Maria knows this. But if you read the uh, alibis, I don't think any of the characters actually comment on that. And so Temas struggled with someone before 8 p.m. Okay, so uh, Joe comes in, gives the cl clean knife uh, true file. See, one of the more, more interesting thing, uh, I think if you guys play, you probably should know, like, there's no way all of this evidence is going to, like, uh, affect or become important, like, early in the story. Like, so, certain, there's, uh, like, even if you look, do a little bit of guessing, it's very, it's very possible that uh, certain evidence might come up later or might not even come up at all during the, during the entirety of the story. So uh, in this section, you're supposed to like point out lies. Now, the thing is that this is definitely one of the harder sections of the game. Yeah, at least uh, up to now and possibly in the entire game. There are obviously uh, some other hard sections, but I don't know. I think these uh, exposing lies sections, I, as I would like to call it, is uh, quite difficult. So let's just uh, go into it. So the first lie you're supposed to ex uh, expose is this. Okay, so Marianne lied and you have to choose 15 p.m. Yeah, of course, you chose yes. So Marianne uh, is supposed to have lied or at least not be truthful in her alibi in uh, at 15 p.m. and here it is. At 15 p.m. Marianne called Yumi at the library. After really talking to the li library, Yumi searched her and went to the kitchen and cleaned the dishes. There's, you're supposed to present here. And Clancy is explaining Yumi has given her alibi instead of at, after, at 15, after she departed with you, she went to the kitchen. You said you went to the kitchen after, after departing with you as well. Strange, isn't it? How many of you saw each other at the kitchen? Yeah, so uh, this is the advantage of the detectives. Uh, they uh, uh, interrogated the suspect one by one. So there's no, no chance for Marianne to hear Yumiko's alibi and then change her alibi to suit it if she was lying. Yeah, she went to the kitchen, but there's no mention of meeting with Yumiko there. You know, this, uh, and, and Marianne is saying like, she, or her mind, she's claiming that she, her mind is a little, little uh, messed up and she's saying she was at the garage actually. So, what you to go, and uh, as for Clancy, again, points out uh, another hole in her testimony, which is the garage footage. Yeah, the funny thing ab about uh, this section is that if you actually m make a mistake in this section, the characters joke about how Clancy is, does, uh, isn't that smart or doesn't make sense. And Fushishin actually claims that, oh, I know the contradiction, but I'm not going to tell you. And and personally, as the author, I actually want to back up Fushishin because it makes sense for him to know that because he was at the... Uh, the office and had a first hand experience with the garage footage. So he did technically knew it's just that in the canon story, Clancy is supposed to be faster than Fushigen. And yeah, Marianne like uh, contradicted the garage footage because in the garage footage, she does not appear at all at 15 p.m. Okay, so the character is just asking. Yeah, she's saying that, oh, you know, no, I know, my memory is still messed up, I just, like, yeah, I, I'm kind of getting senile. And this is also, we get a confirmation of Marianne's age. Yeah, like, she's alive 48. The game actually now remembers that if you don't do this, you're going to press this, you're going to get stuck. But you, after you press this and you went back to the screen, the, the game remes, remembers that you did this. Now, the other lie you have to expose here is, has to do with Mew. 
We have to choose 22 p.m. And uh, also, in order to expose the slides, you have to read the L by yourself. Well, unless you're uh, completely blind and don't care about the game and just watching this video. Hey, I mean, it's better than you not consuming any of my uh, <laughs> media, so. So you have to choose room on lock, lock record. So well, what is the... Is that... Did is that... In her alibi, you specifically mentioned that at 22 p.m. I exit my own room, then I went to Hori's room and opened the door using the spare master key card. Uh, yeah, she claims she opened Hori's door and, uh, and closed it. But that contradicts the lock and lock unlock record because... Uh, yeah, as you can see, there's no like... Shit, there's no opening lock at 20 p.m. 21 on Hori's door. Hori's door was not opened during this time frame at all. So you're going to get some very sussy information from this uh, section. See, and uh, Miu reveals a huge secret uh, about uh, her relationship with Hori and as well as the family members. <laughs> yeah, this is actually one of the, a very recent scene I, I added before uh, exporting the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because the, the characters should... I mean, after doing this, like, the program, like, now, like, scans and rem now, like, understands that, oh, the player has uh, managed to find two truths that they should find. And now the story, uh, like, continues generally. And that now they're going to check out the hole. And now uh, she's uh, opening the, the carpet. Salome enters it. Salome exits it. Yeah, the, the hole works. So Hori and uh, Mew's rooms are connected. Because Mew and Hori made a hole inside the wall. So Salome makes a very quick uh, accusation. Because, you know, he, try, he's, he probably thinks that it's a no-brainer. Because only two people knew about this whole Hori and Mew, so naturally Mew is the one to make make sense for to kidnap Hori. And Fushin suggests another uh, theory is that Hori escaped on her own. So uh, Salim Fushin says a uh, very uh, kind of a bad thing. You need a master keycard or Mew's own private room key to open Mew's room door. See, like. I, this the part where definitely you can get confused because you don't know what the class is referring to. But generally, yeah, you're supposed to like choose the private room's info again. Because uh, if you read this, this room can also be unlocked from the inside before using a personal or master key card by personal handle down. And Salim and Fushishin did not read this, apparently. Yeah, basically, uh, what Salim's accusation is that, oh, uh, Mew, uh, it doesn't change the fact that Mew still is the only one who knew, knew about the whole, other than Hori. So, she, he's suggesting that, oh, you know, she, he, she kidnapped, she wasn't t watching TV at, at uh, 9, 9, 20pm. She actually opened her own door and entered the her own door at 25 and opened and entered Hori's room and drugged her and kidnapped her and locked it out and she hit her. And at 23 20, she locked and unlocked her own door to make it seem like her door was, uh, she was actually exiting her own room or something. And you have to choose Mew's live stream. In bed. Like this basically confirms that uh, Mew was inside her own room at 23. 2030 because uh, without the live stream uh, it, it could also be interpreted as oh Mew locked her own door from the outside at 2030 but the live stream that she did in her room completely like negates that theory and Clancy found something interesting here it's like a microscopic camera yeah and this basically uh makes the previous theories the 
the detectives they were making a uh, futile. Basically, uh, that uh, you know only you and Hor knew about the hole. Now, it's very possible that uh, uh, other people knew about the hole. And now you meet the Gultimer. Yeah, Gultimer also find, uh, found a certain interesting info about someone trying to ha hack into the computer in the in the inspection room. Yeah, I kind of always get uh, nervous when it comes to discussions regarding the inspection room because at so a certain point in the beta version, it was named as the chemistry room, but I think inspection room just fits better. Now you get a bunch of characters and uh, <laughs> I mean, do you guys recognize this character from somewhere? I mean, yeah, it's... it's uh, Easily the most uh, embarrassing part uh, part of about this game. I mean, this character too. Unfortunately, uh, Rifle Lab and R Beauty just don't uh, give out the very good uh, middle-aged person uh, pictures, so I had to use those. So you now you're going to like going back to uh, taking alibis from the characters. So basically, the important uh, part about this alibi is the fact that uh, you know about Tema and Yumiko fighting and kissing one another. That's the big revelation there. And you also get the full, uh, the full alibi. And George also talks about a lot of stuff. And very funny stuff also happens. Yeah, and you get also a bunch of uh, evidence. Trolley has been after it. Yeah, the trolley gets. Yeah, I think the trolley was added during the uh, swarm of information. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I drew it. It's uh, it's so fucking funny to look at. So yeah, you meet Nile and uh, Fushishin also takes his alibi. Yeah, what evidence did you get? Yeah, search for search for is important. I mean, the smoke talk, talk is important in the right too, but. Yeah, in my house, you also get a lot of alibi. So yeah, you get also get six new alibis, and I think it also... Uh, I tried my best to uh, stretch these out, all the alibis, instead of like sitting down and taking all the alibis. Like, you did notice that it, in the first section, we get six alibis, and you do a lot of talking and you know, exposing lies and making furies and do a lot of detective stuff and then you also get a uh, six alibis yeah and i i try to you know, pace things a little yeah you get a lot of uh, interesting information from joseph now the second exposing lie part this part is even harder i mean maybe not so because uh certain uh certain al alibi sections definitely highlight the certain uh, new inf i mean certain new information might be uh Easy to figure out compared to some of the other lies that Marianne and you, uh, Marianne and Mew made. I mean, the easiest one has to be this, right? I mean, you, did you guys get stuck to, on this? Yeah, she lied at 12 p.m. And if you like kept the, uh, attention to the characters talking, uh, when Jack said uh, they were having an affair. Uh, Clancy actually like commented on it, so the story did highlight that this certain moment. And you're obviously supposed to choose uh, Tema's heart. And you also don't forget to press this. So he, he, she talks about the affair. And also, if you like look at Yumiko's uh, alibi, she does not comment anything about this. And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fish asked some very sussy questions. Yeah, but. The funny part about this section is that Fishishin actually derails the subject matter and talks about whether uh, uh, arresting the culprit is even the right thing to do. Um, this section is canon, by the way. I would like to say that, in general, uh, all the character sections where the characters uh, talked with the suspects and sections where, you know, truth is being revealed is also canon, like, which is why also you have this really long con and interesting con conversation uh, regarding the purpose of what they do and the value of their detective job here in inside Yumiko's uh, 
confession. Now, let's jump to... Nile. Nile lost light at 16pm. Again, if you're paying uh, close attention, it's all very understandable because in Nile, Nile's alibi, he did not mention anything about, you know, being with... Uh, it's being on top of Temma on the floor. We definitely omitted this import important information. Okay, so Fushi butts in and also try gives out an answer. Like these two answers are very funny. This is also one of the reasons why I don't punish uh, some sort of there isn't any score system in the game because I don't want to punish people exploring my ga game and trying out different results. If you get stuck on the game, like that's punishment enough. But you know, you can always just watch this video if you get stuck. And you're supposed to choose fighting. And also, Fushishin tricks uh, Nile here. He basically says that. Yeah, like he uses very like wishy washy words like hustle and tussle. Basically, fight. And then, you know, George said this and, and manages to make Nile confess. Now, the important aspect is that, yeah, he ripped his color, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, he, he, like, explains this fight in further detail, and this will, like, come up. Yeah, you're supposed to, like, find out this truth. The next lie you have to expose is, has to do with Mihail. I think the, uh, strange aspect about, uh, like, video game, detective video game is that sometimes, like, if you just want to focus on the murder and the missing Hori, uh, you can't because uh, the story has a certain structure and certain things you it wants you the game sort wants to make you to do certain things so this is the, like the advantage uh, of uh, discord uh, group mystery games because uh, uh, I previously said that, that this story is being adapted from a discord murder mystery game that I also wrote yeah, he lied at 23 p.m. It has to do with Chuchu uh, Mahal because at 23 p.m., uh, Reiner, uh, Reiner, George, and Al were searching Mahal. And uh, Mahal at that time was at 23 p.m. He claimed that he was uh, in the library and then went to the bathroom. But uh, Nal, and, Nal and George were at the library, and Reiner was at the uh, bathroom simultaneously. So. Mihal has to be lying. Yeah, Fushishin also uh, accuses uh, Mihal of murder. Yeah, he, he like fully talks about uh, and confesses about you know hacking this PC, and he was r running a program on it, but he also decided to like type on it. Yeah, the cool uh, yeah, I really like up updates. Like, it was so cool for me. Like I was so happy when I like learned how to like up update certain alba certain truth files. Learn how to co code them in. Was it right now? Like before this section, this was not present. And this section just literally get add got added just now. Like you expose three lies, and you con continue the story on or normally. Now. The story is actually like, like exposing the lie parts definitely might be a uh, hardest part of the game, honestly. But there are definitely like certain parts uh, afterwards that challenge it, maybe even more so. Oh, okay, now Marion gets uh, called and they're going to discuss about what she exactly did at 15 p.m. and why she lied in the first place. Oh, okay, and yeah, this is the part uh, that's hard. Because you, it's also one of the things that's really hard to brute force. So yeah, you have to like think for a while. Fortunately, like I added the character's name, so it can't be something like Suki's Reiner. That'll be too weird. So there's two possible uh, answers to this, but you have to choose the affair on this one. So it's Marion's affair or Tem. Oh, yeah, I mean Temma's affair. Or Yumiko's affair. Either one like le leaves you to the true path. Leads you to the true path.
Yeah, and if you didn't know, you know, uh, Yumiko did, had an affair with uh, Tema, and uh, Fushijin is uh, accused Marion of knowing this about this and hiding it. And also, yeah, Yumiko also commented about how someone saw them inside the office while they were doing it. Yeah, now also, uh, uh, Fushishin also talks about a certain part in Marianne's alibi where Marianne was supposed to talk to, called Yumiko and uh, talk to her up at 15 p.m. But uh, the, the talk was done very abruptly and Marianne did not comment about it. And, uh, Fushishin asked him as, like, saying that certain thing was found at the library and Marion is asking him, what's found at the library that is important to the case? Important to what you're talking about? And at this section, it's a, like, it might be a little hard to figure out, but yeah, it's a clean knife. So, uh, Fushishin is saying it's, there's a clean knife. And also, this clean knife has to be uh, the one I mean, it doesn't really have, ha like, he, it's not concrete, but it's very likely so if Fushishin's fury is right. So the people who could have, like, stole this is first knife uh, with uh, suspects who are Yu, Yimiko, Suki, Marian, and Mew. Yeah, and it, from a third person perspective, I actually really want to, like, comment on Fushijin's trick. And the Salim also like points out a certain like contradiction about Fushijin's theory. And the contradiction is this. I think it might be a little difficult to get it. It's partly my own fault for like not making this truth while longer. Because uh, Jude doesn't exactly say that Oh, you know, no, nobody is at the library. I was staying at the library. He says that I. Jude said he was curious as to what was happening at the library and left. But still, there isn't any other truth file that specifically uh, talks about Jude at uh, at the library. So this one has to be it, if you like use your logic. And I hope people are uh, didn't get stuck on that. It's terribly kind of sad. So yeah, like, Fushishin's claim that something happened at the library between the three of them and not just, you know, Marianne talked with Yumiko very briefly and left. So now, they're going to interrogate the suspects one by one. And Yumiko confesses and she says that, oh, Marianne tried to kill me because I had an, uh, an affair with Tema. And I also wasn't like willing to get out of this mansion, and all, and I'm only loyal to Tema because uh, he's her empl employer. And also, yeah, Marion is mostly going to jail because of attempted first degree murder. Yeah, Jude was kind of angry at her. At her, but you know, Marion says, Oh, it's okay. Yeah, Clancy, uh, Clancy also makes some arguments as to like, like just because she didn't, Marion didn't kill her, someone doesn't mean she isn't guilty. Like, the, the law is supposed to imprison, you know, people who are dangerous to society. Yeah, Jude and uh, Clancy also have an argument that regarding laws and punishment. You also get a new evidence regarding the affair argument. See, also now the topic changes. Now they're like focusing on the kidnapping since that was done. Yeah, and Galton was saying, "Oh, two people carry something in the garage." And you as the player has to like provide evidence 
uh, or guess what he's trying to talk about. And the answer is this, because you know at 22 p.m. Joseph and Rhino was carrying a luggage. At... Yeah, I mean this should be easy if you were paying attention to the alibis. Yeah, also Fushim is making a very interesting theory here. Yeah, like. Yeah, now you have to like again. It's impossible. It's pretty much impossible to get stuck on this. Obviously, the answer is this because why would the uh, Hori exit through Mew's room? Because exiting through Mew's room it has the potential to uh, expose the hole that uh, Hori is supposed to be guarding. It's supposed to be a secret. Of course, we don't get Hori's. Uh, any testimony from Hori herself because she's missing. But if uh, if if, if Muse, Muse testimony is to go by, Hori works in a mysterious way. And you also have to choose a certain fury. And this is the, uh, the fury. Like the other furies. Notice that it, like the furies don't ha necessarily have to be the correct one. It's just supposed to be the one that makes uh, like makes sense it doesn't have to be the ultimate real truth but uh, like but like in order for the story to progress you have to sometimes make a fury that makes sense and doesn't contradict anything that may be the truth or that may not be the truth yeah and yeah uh, Helena says oh well according to Mew Hori will not leave her and this is arguably one of the other harder parts too. Like, you might, if you're like, like you're really like level-headed and actually paid attention and thought things through and understood what Fushishin was trying to get at, you might not get stuck on this. But yeah, this is the uh, right answer. The thing that's making this really hard is that I think there's so many uh, options that you can do. Even if you like, try to restrict yourself to but first of all the answer doesn't have to be restricted to anything Hori did maybe Marianne uh, maybe maybe this might be the answer you don't know that I mean there's no uh, evidence to back it up yeah like you, you can like make some like crazy furious with this uh, cylinder mini game. I think this cylinder mini game is arguably the hardest, and definitely in terms of logic, in terms of logic, it's also hard too because uh, making furies is definitely difficult. Like if someone says something like stupid and uh, you finding an evidence, evidence that contradicts it is kind of easy, but you trying to uh, create a, horror, a fury that makes sense is kind of difficult because you can use this and make a lot of furies that make sense like I don't know you may you can say something like Temma beat Hor Hori or even something like Mew beat Hori or maybe Mew cheated on Hori <laughs> yeah I'm Myself hasn't really messed with this part that much, and if anything, I generally want it, the game to be hard. But yeah, you can make a lot of <laughs> different furies, which makes this section really uh, tedious and hard because you have to like give, uh, try to understand what the hell Fujijin is trying to say, and provide his arguments for him. Yeah, if any, anyone's going to like uh, look at the <laughs> look at the world crew, if any, anyone's going to get stuck, it's probably that section. That section is probably one of the hardest section in the entire game. Yeah, like uh, Fushin's uh, saying that oh, there is a re like he's trying to like create this cer certain line of fury where oh, Hori and Joseph were working together, and Temma 
and and Hori specifically like went to Joseph himself herself and got herself is kidnapped is because she wants to escape the mansion and she, and she wants to escape the mansion because she killed her Tema, her father. But you know, it doesn't have any evidence. And yeah, Joseph claimed that inside the thing was books. Yeah, Helen, like in this section, uh, Her Helen is saying that, oh, in the guest bedroom, uh, the empty box was there, so maybe Hori was already inside the box at that point. Maybe Joseph, uh, ha maybe I don't know. Maybe Joseph find the key and uh, opened opened up some somehow and opened up Hori's, opened up the guest bedroom and put Hori or something. She's taking a pot shot at it, but it's clearly wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong because of this. Yuka entered the guest bedroom and turned when she knows that it was empty. Yeah, so Yuka actually did uh, testify as to like looking at the empty box and nobody was inside it at 20 pm. And yeah, Sandra is a Yuka dude. Why 2050? Okay. Hmm. Fuck. I think this was definitely a plot hole or something. Yeah, like, this is a plot hole. I mean, this isn't a plot hole as much as it is a typo, but it's a very critical typo because I think it's supposed to be 2005. I might be wrong because, you know, it's been a while since I wrote this game, and honestly, I'm kind of in the zone when I'm writing. But. No, I just don't understand the logic here. I brought it myself, but I think I fucked up. Yeah, like, okay, okay, it was a plot hole. Because uh, Salem is saying uh, 20 p.m. So this uh, 2050 has to happen 2005 because in the true files in the room lock and the unlock record, record, you can see that it that 2008 Muse room door was unlocked. And uh, the characters are furious in that Hori herself uh, opened Mew's door from the inside at this juncture. Yeah, this is the problem of, you know, not being super thorough about my uh, edits. But you know, that's the thing, like, this is also one of the advantages of the modern Davies because I get to see some stuff and like this isn't the movie release or CD release. I can just edit it and like post the version 1.1. Oh yeah, like okay, it's a, I, I just fucking pressed wrong thing, yeah, what am I doing? So you're not supposed to do that, but uh, Joseph is saying, oh, it, like I exactly saw uh, you going through her room at 21 p.m. And the evidence to prove that is this. Huh. Holy shit, I actually think this is another plot hole. Because it's supposed to be like... Well, I mean, to be fair, it just means that uh, Yumiko opened her door and left. Like, it's not a plot hole. Uh, but I think it, I should have like, explained it better for the viewers. Because apparently Yumiko opened her uh, door at 2040 when Joseph called. She didn't close it. She went to Joseph and uh, like opened the guest bedroom and then went and entered her own, own room at 1 p.m. So this isn't actually a plot hole, I just think I should have explained it better. Exactly at 20.00. Okay, yeah, this is definitely uh, the hardest part because a very hard part because in the or original uh, murder mystery discord game our server members actually got way got like struggled on this very hard and i had to like hint at give hints to the people consistently so that they will get it and in this section it's even harder because 
like I I don't like it, the writing my writing style makes it so that you don't see the characters in the monologue. So Clancy at this time was just listening at to Joseph and Mew and thinking to him to, him, to himself silently, and he he figured it out. Whereas the player could be completely in the fucking blind and not know what Clancy is talking about. So the true answer here is very really unsuspected. It's this Jutsu Reiner at 21, because uh, Reiner was at the main hall, entered the main mansion from the outside and uh, stood at the main hall at 20.0 and, and he stayed there until Joseph came. So basically, and, and like knowing the positioning of the mansion is very important. This is also why you should uh, definitely try to memorize a lot of info, because this game is very skill based. As you can see, like, the main, like Rhino stood here at the main hall, so, and uh, at this point, Yumiko enters her room at twenty exactly twenty one zero zero and locks it, and Joseph is here. So, in order for uh, Joseph to have kidnapped Hori, he has to go here and bring Hori here, or, or Hori has to go uh, come here and go through the main hall at here. From 2100 to 22, because Reiner was uh, here until he met Joseph. And yeah, Clancy talks about this. There's also a small five minute gap, but it's too coincidental. So, yeah, that, that is also definitely one of the sections where uh, people could get stuck. And now uh, Zuling is calling Clancy and they need to uh, stop a, an, a, an armed criminal who is r running around with a car on the streets crazy. And yeah, they stop it. And so basically a, a certain time skip happens. The next day happens. And they take a, took a video. And you also get to see uh, Hori. Yeah, you get to see Horace footage. She's uh, tied up. Yeah, I mean, she's supposed to like the writing says the right dress. I seriously want to go with that mainly because you no, know, it's just a uh, wife lab's bright work. <laughs> Not something like I definitely could have like made it so to, to, that you no know, characters could have custom clothes, but uh... yeah, there's a static sound, kind of an annoying static sound, but basically. They got the footage of uh, Hori being kidnapped. And also they got a threat saying that Hori will die if they don't stop the investigation. Yeah, Clancy is claiming that one of the suspects might be uh, giving info to the kidnappers. And yeah, a bunch of characters just suddenly, <laughs> suddenly get out here. Yeah, now we are trying to say now we have to like crack the case on how exactly Hori was captured. That might give us a clue. So one way or, or another, you will so try to solve this case. Case of how the uh, kidnapping happened. Since she was kidnapped, Yamu is like worried about her safety. Yeah. Now Fushin talks about uh, balcony. And this theory is uh, wrong because he's saying that oh you know the kidnapper could have just uh, killed Tema, grabbed uh, his master key card, grabbed the unconscious Hori, and then just go out through the balcony and lock the lock the balcony from the outside and descend down. But that's not true because uh, the cops checked the victim's pockets and inside her, her, his pockets were his master key card. So. There's no way for the kidnapper, if the kidnapper used the balcony to exit, there's no way for them to put the master key card back because the balcony was locked when Marianne entered the room. So which exit they used? Okay, it can't be the main hall. The garage, it has to be garage because you can't cheat the camera 
But Helen says, oh, you know, there is a certain way to cheat Cameron. And uh, he says, uh, she says a certain suspicious concealed item was moved. And if you guys remember, there was a trolley here. Yeah, it makes, it definitely makes George a bit sus. Yeah, Mihal says, uh, well, I, I actually was the first one to put out, pulled my shit out from the trolley. So, and he says, oh, you know, when we were at the car, trolley I put on, and the horror was not inside the trolley. It's almost out. Yeah, because you know, now George and Hal had an alibi together. Yeah, and Salim is accusing Mihal because Mihal is the one who's left awake. So he's the only one who was able to like uh, pull out uh, Hori and uh, uh, out her and give, to the, give her to the kidnappers while uh, Niall and George were sleeping. Yeah, and if you were paying attention, you would be able to easily answer this. Yes, the computer ain't been marked. So how they like, start from 2040 and to 2320, you're supposed to be like at the, at the inspection room. It's a very debatable section here because I personally think like if I was in this situation where a certain someone could have done something in 20 minutes, it'll be very hard to calculate. I mean, it's possible, I guess. I mean, technically, it could be like other people say it's technically could be even 15 minutes. Yeah, and he also gambled on Alan George sleeping, which is something that can't be guaranteed. And yeah, them uh, furious on like Hori using the uh, having some sort of malicious intent and exiting uh, using Mew's room to give herself an alibi is also mute because you know she's kid kidnapped now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like Marin definitely uh, learns about this. Uh, Thing, uh, about this uh, hole in the wall a little too late I guess yeah because uh, up until now like it, only Mew was saying oh I'm like close to Hori and these people are awful to me like nobody re really verified her claims no, no one really contradicted it but no one verified it but like uh, like just now Mary's reaction basically Verified that uh, Mew, uh, Mew's testimony about her, her and Hori's relationship is true. Yeah, talk about religion. Yeah, and also Mew is accusing uh, Marion of being the kidnapper. Because also, you know, the video footage uh, specifically asked Maria to come with, to the forest with the money. Yeah, like they have arguments about religion. So I'm like, we can talk to Sebastian or whatever. Okay, yeah. The right answer is uh, here. Because if you like realized it, like it took three people, uh, Nile Runner and Suki carried, carried it. So it took three people to carry that, and somehow Juri is now uh, lifting it all by himself.
Yeah, like if you were able to like guess that something was off about the rabbit figure before the actual revelation, the story revealed, revealed it. Hey, props to you, man. <laughs> it was definitely a really, really hard mystery. My uh, <laughs> my Discord group definitely struggled to guess that. Oh well, again, typo! Damn it! Oh my god, the typos! Oh my god, tell me. Whatever, it's version one, uh, literally the first version. Like, it's playable. You know, the kid numbers inside the suit because, you know, the rabbit figure has a. Uh, it's hollow inside. The eyes show the outside. And there's even a zipper from the, on the inside that can be opened. Yeah, Marion is completely in, in oblivious about what they found, so you have to get, present an evidence to it. This should be easy. Like, people shouldn't get stuck on this part. Yeah, the person who brought this to them is brought is Nile. Yeah, and they also question Nile a bunch now. Yeah, he chose two. Two is a very strange number because it took three people to carry and it was quite heavy during the day of the murder but before right now you was able to carry it alone so two people are carrying it, it like it kind of swings towards uh it being hollow and nobody being inside it but also you know only one could have done it person could have done it Yeah, yeah, now they're mentioning that all three of them like carried the rabbit figure. And there are four items. He say, he's saying that the people who visited his mansion and uh, might be, uh, mansion, I mean the apartment, might be the criminals. Or they also left their door open. Yeah, Fushin is kind of being sus about suspecting him now. But they're going to like send an investigation team. Yeah, like Fushin attacks. <laughs> attacks. Yeah, now like, I definitely could have like added sound effects, but I don't know. I, I just want to like release the first version as soon as possible i definitely think the uh second version will have more fixes on the on the writing and on the typos and what certain plot points let's try the context on now this is also quite a long section This section is very suspicious. Suspicious. If you like continue it, you know why uh, Fushishin is like asking these weird questions and making forcing Nile to say certain lines. I still like really like this part. I think I, I definitely did a quite a good job. Yeah, like Fushishin like grabbed all, a lot of uh, you know, was uh, like grabbed all, all nice. Like, O o no, Niles voice on his recording footer, so he edited it and made a response. Yeah, Jekyll Wayne. Yeah, now they're literally like talking to the kidnappers using their phone to respond. Like I could have like made a uh, gameplay out of this section. I definitely might even in the second version, honestly. But I don't know. Like this game has been quite difficult thus far.
you now they know the exact location of the kidnappers and Clancy like is asking okay you see the footage did uh, Chikel truly entered it or and did the kidnappers leave the place and they also make an LP <laughs> that's a plot point yeah and they also found Chikel Wayne entering the building and they also analyze and deduces that okay Hori might not have been carried out of that building yeah, and the Apper had to handle the kidnappers and saved Hori. Yeah, and also now, now, now it's just like dumps his backstories. Yeah, the villain talk. Like, like you could argue that this part is like weird because. <laughs> Now I just suddenly starts talking about his past. But like, here's the thing, like, it's very really understandable. Like, uh, this isn't just some random expression. Like, uh, Nala's actually, like, by saying this, he's trying to, like, lower his, uh, he's trying to win the hearts of the detectives and maybe make them, like, betray justice by saying all this. So uh, there's definitely a, a, a method to his madness because that's the only thing he can do now. He's trying to justify his crimes, so at least, I don't know, maybe he'll go, maybe they'll feel sympathy for him and that might affect his testimony, I don't know. Maybe he just want to win, you know, after hiding all this truth inside himself for so long. And he also, he claims he didn't kill Tenma. He also, yeah, this is where uh, Smoke Talk matters. We said 20 p.m. now was with George, and uh, yeah, we now met George. So Michal was out. So basically, Michal was probably out at 20:30, according to him. So now and George probably met one another at 20:40, and before that he also had an alibi. So he completely had an alibi between 21 p.m. to 23 p.m. Oh wait, what? Wait, did I have press? Oh wait, I, there's the right answer. I actually thought I... Oh, fuck! I think I fucked up my, all my pro programming. So when, whatever I do, it, it just says it's wrong. I actually did not get uh, section wrong during my tests. Okay, this is quite embarrassing. Yeah, it's supposed to jump right into this section, but I think I messed up on the the programming because it, it's supposed to have a jump. It's supposed to make you jump back to this section, but it doesn't. So, uh, if you got the section wrong, congratulations, you're going to get a free freebie. And yeah, Mary says though she doesn't want to go. To the detention center. Oh man, this game has fucking bugs, man. This is bad. But, like, it's fine. It's only like one actual bug that really kind of ruins the experience. And even then, like, if you are don't want a huge challenge and want an easy story, that's probably not a big problem. It's definitely strange that I missed this for strange. Yeah, like, uh, he gives, uh, Marianne a leeway. Mihal also tries to get a leeway. I want to meet my girlfriend. And also, Fushishin says a very interesting thing. Like, yeah. Like, I'm saying he, uh, yeah, like, imprison people is wrong, and it's also not wrong to fight for your freedom. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Yeah, like Maria just mocks. Okay, I'm going to prison now. Are you? Did you? Did that make you free the next day? Uh, yeah, a bunch of people entered. Enter. Yeah, I know they also like feast and like have fun. 
Yeah, you also get her. Yeah, I think this is one of the last alibis. Hori was the only one who didn't testify because she was kidnapped. Yeah, also, yeah, and also you get more info about Jekyll Wayne's exact actions. And yeah, Nile was texting uh, Jekyll and uh, giving him uh, suggestions saying that, oh, hiding on the trolley at this point is good. Because, yeah. Like, Fushin actually uh, asked Nile for his phone and he said he lost it. Yeah, now the start talking about Tenma's killing because that's the only uh, mystery that's left. Yeah, now they're clearing out George and Niall because they were together during... Yeah, this one is... Uh... Yeah, this one might be a little bit hard, but it's this... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's supposed to be like this. If you make a mistake, you're supposed to like jump your back. I think the uh, I definitely fucked up on the smoke talk. Uh, smoke talk present evidence section, and you can also definitely uh, hear the background music change to, to Suki's theme. I mean, the name of the exact soundtrack is uh, Bunny Friendly Bunny, but uh, it's definitely used for uh, Suki's theme. And yeah, Jack and uh, Suki had an alibi during 21 to 23 p.m. so they're cleared and hell is cleared yeah they I mean they probably knew honestly but they might not knew or maybe they might have like uh, thought of it if you started or maybe try let me try to make this oh yeah he yeah he com actually comments on how you know, like how this is a TV show and they themselves could, could have like figured it out themselves and uh, like they're being annoying and trying to test his skills or something okay okay this is a walkthrough so I'm not going to like start better testing right now yeah if this uh, Joseph gets clear because Joseph was at the Hollow of Doors and uh, you can't clear this because uh, I kind of didn't want, want to like the, the players to answer this because this uh, kind of relates to the previous discussion they had about Joseph being at being innocent because, because he couldn't go to the main hall or Hori couldn't go to the main hall I mean, to be fair, this does, like, doesn't it clear a lot of people because Reiner was at 21 p.m. at the main hall. So, so unless someone was ex exactly upstairs, they couldn't be the culprit. Yeah, the basketball record is uh, something that's really, really useful that wasn't used up until now. Because Marianne was playing basketball there and the face recorder completely recorded her face. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she did not look at it. You know, Salim is answering this question. It's kind of funny because Salim is the first one to uh, suspect Mew. Okay, I'm kind of starting to confuse myself. Yeah, the room, yeah, it's supposed to be room lock and lock. Yeah, that's a good argument. And also you have to give evidence. With Muse livestream to strengthen up your argument. Yeah, like Helen is, is like being smug because Helen is the original one to point out, point this out. Yeah, notice that there are possible to answer but like certain some plants specifically says certain someone someone gave 
her an alibi. So you are, this means that you have to specifically choose this and not the room and unlock records. And now you have to choose the room and unlock and lock record. So you also have to pay attention to this, the question itself. Because sometimes the question asks, oh, uh, certain someone gave her an alibi. So you have to give uh, a, a true file that's related to a person. But if, says the, if they say something, then it could be anything. That's the wrong. Yeah, and they finally go to Hori and it's, it's pretty obvious. It's the most recent evidence. Yeah, and the position uh, like, suggests suicide. It's not suicide because, uh, you know, two step wounds too hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can see the player said that this story was written on at 2022. <laughs> Yeah, you also have to post another. Yeah, Salim is accusing Jekyll. You also have to post. Uh, I mean, I mean, present another. Yeah, this uh, yeah this file is just useful for uh, clearing out anyone of murder and terror in general because you can't go upstairs. The only people who are upstairs are what you. Was Miriam up? Oh no, Miriam was outside, but she could like climb up the balcony, and she had the master key card, so she could like use the uh, key card herself to, and and enter uh, Tema's room. That's why I also have to like in the writing process, I had to invent that basketball record. She played basketball thingy, so she will be like be cleared. Of course, you know, real life cases aren't this convenient. But you know, the purpose of this mystery game is to be super realistic. Like, I want, generally, I do think that this case definitely is realistic, more realistic than something like Danganronpa. And in some regards, it might be more realistic than Ace Journey. But I don't know, there's also some very unrealistic parts too. Very supernatural thing. Yeah, Fushin says, uh, come on, Susa is a thing, but. Yeah, he's suggesting that, okay, Tema kill, killed himself, but. Uh, what if the second step wound was made by someone else? Yeah, why would she do that? He managed to cause them. Yeah, they find a diary. Thomas' diary inside the research room, inside the inspection room computer. Yeah, and he he talks about Cyclone and X instead of why Cyclone and X is a is a colorless, tasteless liquid that makes someone commit suicide. Whereas instead of why is uh, the antidote for that. And she, he says that he lost his master key card, and then he found his master key card. Uh, afterwards, so he uh, became wary and thought that someone definitely stole it and put it out and throw it away. The author said, Oh, we searched that room, but nothing will work for Now they entered the research room and they also put the password in. Yeah, you get new evidence. You're still getting new evidence. Oh yeah, somehow like the new evidence is directly on the t TV watching duo. <laughs> yeah, this is because of the certain way I programmed it. I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna go, go ahead and say it. It's not really related to the case, but uh, the problem is that the TV watching duo is an evidence I didn't know I needed. So that's probably why it's like on the last tier info you get this evidence way earlier. It's an evidence that I created, true file that I created very late into the writing of this game. Yeah, and Clancy uh, tells him to like, take this uh, cyclamium man, steady Y, and uh, do research on it. They basically return. 
Yeah, Tim uh, killed her uh, himself. Yeah, you have to choose Cyclone Mix uh, here. Logic is very obvious because you know Cyclone Mix uh, removes the psychological restrictions, so he might be able to commit suicide while stabbing himself in the heart twice. And they also have to like po point out a certain wrong file, and it's the autopsy report. Because you know, first of all, yeah, Tema, this used that Tema was not drunk, but they, he was drunk. Yeah, okay, now this is the interesting part. Because now the characters are wondering, okay, when exactly the Cyclone Mix uh, take effect? Yeah, and yeah, Cyclone Mix starts, and the victim starts looking sickly. Yeah, like, the characters definitely talked in their alibi a lot about how Tema's face turned blue. Yeah, like, uh, Galton was just, oh, maybe, like, uh, they, like, suggested Tema to drink one of the chemicals. But yeah, the logic here is weird because uh, Tema, why will Tema just like drink random potions that some suggested him to drink when he knows Cyclonium makes is going missing? But you know, he might have forgot about it. But yeah, you have to throw the hard evidence against it, and this is the hard evidence. Yeah, Tema knew about what the potions and uh, chemicals did. I mean, why am I just saying potions? It's chemicals. Like, it's so bad. Like, as much as I want to, like, make this character more realized, I keep saying potions, but... So, that ended up becoming entering the writing. Like, it's fine. It's technically a potion, too. Yeah. It's suggesting that, uh, oh, Tema was maybe injected with the Cyclone Mix. And there's also hard evidence against it. I mean, aside from that evidence that Tema would, you know, would uh, complain about being being attacked by the by the culprit, if that were the case, and tell other people like, how he was attacked. But even disregarding that common sense answer, this is, like, Evidence. Like, uh, this evidence proves it because uh, Tema did not have any external wounds. Yeah, now you have to choose where exactly. Yeah, this is the, the din dinner info. Yeah, it's a free uh, choice. I definitely couldn't make it so that uh, you have to like type by typing the answer yourself. But I think that will be also a bit too hard. So yeah, yeah. The talk now Fushin like talks about how oh you know Tema's cup could be poisoned, <laughs> and Altamore like rejects because there is ob an obvious uh, argument against it, which is. Cup cleaning, where like the characters Yumuka, if you read uh, Marianne, Jude, and Yumuka's alibi, they talk extensively about this cleaning procedure. Yeah, here fish is going all out, like, oh, they go a lot. Yeah, Helen is absolutely killing it. So, Elton was arguing, okay, but everyone drank from the tea. They all should have died. Right? And Helen is saying, oh, they didn't die because of uh, Steady Y. Yeah, this also uh, choose an answer type of uh, thing. 
very easy. I killed definitely made it harder, but I don't know. Do you guys want that, really? It didn't, didn't poison the action at 4 p.m. And there's no evidence against it. It's definitely a thing that you can get stuck. But if you like remember your evidence, evidences, you know, at 50 p.m. At 15, yeah, sometimes the characters do that. At 15, Suki and you drink, uh, asked you to drink it, you drink it, the hallway, you see, yeah. They actually drank it. Yeah, I'm fishing so I keep saying, oh, Suki. And now you have to choose a person. And it's obvious, even if you can, if you don't know, you can just brute force it's Joseph. Yeah, he has natural limit. Like, some of the answers are really funny. But yeah, Joseph didn't die because but this, uh, yeah, this is a decent fury. Is that a guest cups? So yeah, basically, uh, Colton was arguing that, hey, hey, and if you do re read the, the alibis and true files, it's clear that uh, Joseph did not eat the spaghetti, but he drank the tea, so, tea just like uh, Tema, so he should have died, but... But, but Fushin is saying that, oh, you know, the antidote was inside the guest cups, and naturally, that's why Joseph didn't die. I mean, yeah, they, uh, you know, established the fundamentals. So now, you cross out suspects. And then again, like, if you will remember the certain, certain new things, remember the new things, uh, events that happened, then, uh, this should clear Maryam because 15 p.m. in the library. And yeah, so the three of them actually, like, uh, that, uh, will hold knife attack incidents. Definitely give all three of them alibis. But you know, you and you did come back together. And put, put the poison there at that time. And Galton was saying, oh, actually that Joseph could have done it. And this is also one of the uh, harder things too, because you can definitely get stuck. Or at least brute force, start brute force until you go to the right answer. And the right answer is obviously like this. Yeah, you have to remember the map because Joseph said he was sleeping here, and when Mew knocked on on her, on and opened the door, Joseph was here here, and so that checks out. And most importantly, uh, Mihail and uh, Jack were at the rec room and claimed they were playing at from 14 to 17 p.m. So during that uh, amount of time, they could just couldn't just come in and enter the dark room if he wasn't there. So that's pretty much it. Like he has to be inside the dark room at that time. Yeah, like some is something like very slight because. If you, this is an evidence that's very, uh, very intuitive because the, the room's name is called Dark Room, and that's just a, not a, like a silly nickname. It's actually literally a dark room, and uh, it even has its own truth file, specifically designed for this moment. It's something that you should get very early on. Yeah. Yeah, again, like Helen says, certain someone can prove her innocence. So it basically the game is asking you to, uh, okay, if you're going to present an evidence, at least present an evidence that's uh, relevant to a people. Yeah, it's this.
Yeah, like, yeah, they did, they did like, suffer it, uh, shortly. Yeah, and yeah, there's two evidence that proves Mir's innocence. And one of them is the basketball record. See, I say, uh, yeah, and what's cl saying, class is saying is true. Because if you look at this, yeah, you, you have, oh, fuck, I fucked up again. Basically, ah, oh, man, this is so sad. It's something that I definitely need to fix. Huh, it's kind of strange because nobody said it about this in, in but the basketball field is supposed to have a, a blue exit here, too. Yeah, like there's a problem with the map, so I kind of have to fix two different stuff in the next version. Damn it. Damn it all. Yeah, I mean, I definitely thought that there wasn't any, any like issues, but like currently speaking, there are two major writing issues I, I just noticed. Like, typos are whatever, okay? They're not a really big problem. But I did kind of just rush this out, huh? I mean, it's not technically not rushed because I did like work on it hard and the story itself was like, like tested out by our people, but on Discord, but I, I think they uh, still weren't like harsh enough or observant enough to point out certain parts. And by the way, I'm not like that kind of guilty about rushing things to be honest because like i said the point about the game is that different versions exist and even if i like fix certain plot holes or so uh and or uh, explain things more properly it's just like fixing a typo or whatever doesn't like change the characters that much and the story much at all okay oh yeah they're talking about Reiner. and Reiner is not the culprit because of this yeah Reiner was on the garage sleeping, inside the garage sleeping, so, and there is a video footage of it, so. And they're also talking about George. Yeah, George, Niall, Tema, and Alba. Tema is dead, so he, his account is gone, but George and Niall are, account, like, are... Accomplice to one another. I mean, accomplice, not, not accomplice, I mean, they're witnesses to one another. Yeah, like, Fushishin, like, talks about this, uh, about them working together, and it's not the worst fear, honestly. It's definitely more, it makes more sense than Yuka and Jude working together. I mean, Yuka and Jude make, working together is, uh, also makes sense too, in somewhat, simply because, uh, Yumiko has a motive to kill Tamma because of the pressure she was having. But, um, and Niall also has a motive to kill Tamma. Yeah, and now they cleared out all the suspects. And the only person that killed Tamma is Suki. And the music got all serious now. It's such a good music. It's called the Zodiac Master. Yeah, they explained all the stuff basically last like about six hundred minutes. Yeah, yeah. Suki saying he doesn't have motive. Maybe I'll just suspect has an alibi, but that's not a no good argument. Yeah, like, you saying, don't trust the cops. Do you know what they're doing? <laughs> well, there's like, actually, there are some issues. Yeah, the music got even more darker. Yeah, Galtermo also, you know, he probably fought things through uh, during this time.
the antidote is the yellow like substance. Its jar size is similar to the for sure. And the gas cup is white, so yeah, some of the like knows this white substance inside their gas cups. And the position is just oh, there's the water inside the uh, cups, and uh, if you put the yellow uh, sugar-like thing inside it, it's just going to disintegrate and one, become one of the water, so people won't be disgusted by it. But someone should have said something in their alibi. And Donna, there's the big reveal. Basically, it just shares uh, Fushijin's uh, fury. Joseph didn't drink him with his own cup. <laughs> yeah, Joseph was a really funny guy. Not gonna lie, I did enjoy writing him. <laughs> yeah, so not a joke there. It's funny because uh, one of the options, uh, I don't know, was Fushishin. Uh, Fushishin uh, could have said uh, was that, oh, Joseph has innate immunity to poison. <laughs> and he says, oh, I have immunity to poison. Maybe that's the case. Okay, now this gets very interesting. This is also one section where you can be, get uh, stuck. Or if you're really like smart, you will you'll be like saying, "Yes, this is what I have been suspecting. I'm so glad my theory was true." And that is, you know, for Joseph. So basically, what happened is that after dinner. Hori met uh, Joseph and gave her him a cupcake. Yeah, like saying, yeah, Hori has not good inside. Yeah, almost too good, I would say. Man, I wish this section was worst. Yeah. The music just got darker. Yeah, like Hori having the antidote is very strange because, like, like sure the poison was uh, a secret and it wasn't in, locked inside the research room, but the antidote was also in the research room, hidden. And uh, after it was found out, Tema also hit both the poison and the antidote. And even then, like him, her Hori, like. Knowing to give uh, Joseph the cupcake is a little like like uh, her Hori going giving Joseph the cupcake at that exact moment is a little too convenient. Yeah, this uh, like these cylinder games are really really hard. Like the first cylinder game might be decent, like not that hard, but uh, the cylinder game, and you could make certain arguments, but it's very difficult because you have to like think about, you have to restrict yourself on how Hori uh, or Victor alibi. And the answer to this is very interesting. You're supposed to put climb over wall. It is the only right answer. There's no other alternatives. It's a three meter high wall. Yeah, riding on the wall. This is like a really fucking hilarious. You, you, if, you guys should definitely uh, press this when you play it. If, if you are playing it, I hope you press this one. Yeah, now. It, Fushin is talking about uh, the motive. He 
if the motive wasn't that hard because Temo was such a fucking asshole, like almost everyone had a had a motive to kill him. Like oddly enough, Suki was actually one of the few people who didn't have a motive to kill Temma. <laughs> like maybe Joseph didn't have a motive too. And George was said he was a prince. Yeah. She's in boxes and like Yep. Yeah now Horace is like, okay if I use the carbon boxes to get out, then how the hell do I get back in? Because you know, Mew is watching me. And the answer is this. There's a little grappling hook in the tool here. Okay, now this part is actually hard, but to be fair, this is like the final uh, nail in the coffin, her last line. Yeah, this section was added very recently, and I might have even rushed its execution a little bit, but I think it's fine. The problem you might have is that you might not understand what Galtimer is specifically referring to, but you have to think in terms of why Hori would lie. Because uh, lying on certain things has to have benefited her in some way. Or at least, you know, you can like go check out Hori's alibi. Like, let me sh show you, okay? If you look at Hori's alibi, in this section, I did best all the machines. So, we can play for, well, tennis and play, but we got. Okay, we entered the dining hall to meet. Yeah, she just skipped a huge portion. It is technically a lie. Like you could say it's bad memory, but it, like uh, judging by this, by the current events, it's really not. And if you look at Mew's alibi, it's different. Yeah, they were go. They were on the tennis. Hori told him to go ahead while she cleans the messes. We, we. Oh my God! Another typo. We made in the two courts. I entered the mirror hall, then entered the bathroom. When I came out, I went out in the mirror hall. Then I entered the dining hall. Man, these typos, man. Ah, oh, man. For what? Okay, we found like three or four, three or four, I don't know, three typos and two actual, like, legit problems. Which is fine, but I, uh, like, if you search high and wide, there might be other, some other problems. And yeah, you have to say, you have to literally write. Yeah, writing is really hard. And I think this last section is also quite hard too. But you know, this is the last final hit, final shot. So I definitely think it's deserve deserving to be uh, this hard. What the? Okay, that's weird. It's like, why the fuck did... Okay, that's bullshit. I think this also might have been an error where the first time it definitely misses or something. Okay, let me test this one thing. Okay, definitely, okay, okay, okay. It's not like, yeah, I think definitely like make it so that I don't know, this is some sort of a glitch. This is definitely a glitch, where even if you get the right answer on the first try, there's, uh, it, it kind of fucks up and doesn't register it. But it's okay, I think I actually was aware of this uh, glitch when I exported the game, but I just couldn't understand what the hell was going on. But basically what you need to do is press this. Yeah, now it works. That's fucking weird. But I don't know exactly why it ha it's happening. Where the first, like, if you, if you like, uh, do answer, the, uh, get the right answer on your first try, no matter what, it's going to, like, uh, make you go to the back. Make you go to the wrong section, so that's very annoying. Yeah. 
And literally, Hori almost like uh, fucking confessed to the murder. Like, I mean, you can argue that uh, Hori is just you know saying that oh, Gatomo, these detectives are being rude. They're try trying to frame me, so just don't give them more evidence to frame me. Like, you can interpret it as that, or you can interpret it as differently, more sincerely. Yeah, whatever. I should have like said something like check the check the place. I mean, check the tool shed. Like, the place is referring to the tool shed. Yeah, there, there's definitely something, uh, the writing that I definitely could improve right now. Like, after all, the police checked the tool shed after they came and the gravel hook was still there. Like, that'll literally make this sequence less confusing. Like, one thing I definitely, like, understood from writing a mystery is that you're not supposed to confuse uh, people. If anything, if you want to be a good detective or you if you want to be a good mystery writer in general you need to learn how to be precise and the characters in story should also demand the, the suspects to be more suspects and witnesses to be more precise yeah like back in the tool shed why am i why did i write place yeah none of you guys checked so if you actually check, the, there might be uh, some, say there might be some marks on the wall. Yeah, I mean that's about it. And she, you know, info dumps like how Tema arranged the marriage for them. And she, she also got punched by her father. She committed the crime, which is very sad because Mew and Marianne, so he definitely deeply cares for her. Dude, after I like wrote this scene, like uh, when I went to bed after I wrote this scene, like I fucking cried in my bed, man. Yeah, you were trying to defend her. Yeah, Helen's facing me. I think she also starts arguing too. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, here. Yeah, there are like two detectives, like Fushishin and and Helen, are doing a, uh, standing against this Clancy, Ultimo, and Solomon are against it. So this is a very interesting situation that we have. Honestly, like this is one of the, like easily the best. Yeah, this is definitely a fitting for a finale. I'll say that. Yeah, Fushi says, uh, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some truth bombs are being like put on on the field, man. Like I genuinely want to know like what the, what people's opinion are. I mean, not gonna fucking lie, I definitely do think it, you know Helen and Fishishin has a point. <laughs> like I'm go not going to fucking lie. Like I like if I was a character in here, I probably would have said something similar to like Fushishin in this section too. Maybe I don't know. Would I have the balls? Probably. Probably, I don't know. I really don't know. These type of things are like, unless you are like exactly in that situation yourself, you will know what you will do. <laughs> yeah, the animations are pretty cool. Yeah, like. Like in the original soundtrack, the the thing that the soundtrack that played when Helen like stood in front of Salim was called uh, "Melodic Dreams" White Sand, and the currently uh, "Skies" by Russ Brooklyn is playing. Like those two soundtracks only play on on those scenes. Like I try to make it to work on other scenes, but it doesn't. It doesn't. 
like like when I like listen to like melodic dreams and skies I, um, in my head was like perfect this music exactly fits fits these scenes and I was right Yeah. Yeah, position is like, yeah, I follow all myself. Yeah, chapter one end. Well, uh, hope you all enjoyed that walkthrough and slash commentary, I guess. And see you guys next time, I guess.